images and how to remove them from real estate sites. Um, so, Darren, do you want to kick this off? I know this started with a client requesting this. Sure. sure. Yeah, um, and in an agent response that we hadn't heard before, um, that be, this is becoming much more normal. My guess is that it, it's been fairly normal at the higher price points mm -hmm. for a long time. And by higher price points, I guess I mean multi-million. You know, people just obviously very much aware of their privacy issues and concerns, wanting to eliminate photos and videos and floor plans of their home online. Yeah. So for us, we're going to start writing our offers with that as a request mm -hmm. in advance. Right. The offer's accepted. They've agreed to do it. Um, because what happened here is in the past, we've made the request and we've always gotten a Sure, no problem. Maybe there's some additional follow up with various sites, online yeah. sites. Yeah. But the realtor was willing to do it. In this case, the realtor came back to us who wasn't from the MLS that we belong to, it was an outside MLS. And they said, MLS guidelines don't allow us to remove this data. Yeah. Uh, and I must say, it was kind of disappointing. Yeah. Um, so. I, well, you know, for me, I wonder, and, you know, we're all figuring out the rat trap, but I wonder if they still could have done it. Uh, do you think they could have? Or do you think maybe their MLS really does keep them from? That's a very That's good great. question, Joe. Uh, I, they certainly didn't want to if they could. Um, the only advantage for realtors to keep that data online is, you know, from their own personal marketing for future listings for uh, to show other people, but how often are potential clients looking online to locate these things? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, it happens, but you know, again, doing it in advance is the ideal going forward. And um, boy, if, if they if they say no, then the buyer knows that it won't happen in advance. Uh, but this is a, at least an alternative to try to get it off these most popular sites that are yeah. that are public facing yeah compared to the mls which is theoretically agent facing yeah i was going to say at least that's some saving grace but gosh it certainly seems like as a private individual with a private home you should have control of your your own images that was you know this may come up in the future yeah. as a litigate uh, as a litigated item yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if something happens to someone and they yeah. try to source it back to this yeah. as as a as a tool to help. Well, it, yeah. And as we know, you know, uh, criminals get smart. Some of them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's great to have. Hopefully they're not listening. Things. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let me go ahead and uh, read it. How to remove your home's photos from Zillow, Redfin and Realtor.com. This comes from USA Today. I believe it was last week. Yeah, four days ago, they put this out. So great service to a lot of people. Uh, more than you realize in public information online, here are five private details anyone can find out about you and your home online. Luckily, there are steps you can take to protect your privacy. Tap or click for steps to blur your home on Google Maps and Apple Maps. So that's another area, right? If you're not trying to sell your home, there's no reason to leave interior photos and other details on real estate sites like Realtor, Zillow and Redfin. Just think about how valuable your floor plan might be in the wrong hands. So public information. When you're selling your home, you want potential buyers to have all the information they need, including condition, photos, floor plans, furnishings, and appliances. But if you just bought a home, you might not want all that information posted for anyone to see. Do you want just another to see in every entry point for each room? This uh, information puts you at risk from criminals who can put together strategies based on your floor plans. You might assume your real estate agent or seller would remove your home's info from real estate sites after you've made a deal, but that's not always the case. Uh, wonder who are your neighbors? You can walk over and say hi, but you can also find your neighbor's name online. Oh, that's another thing there. Uh, a listing network. 
When your home is for sale, the broker uploads your home's information, photos, floor plans, and lots more to a multiple listing service. This service listing is where houses and pictures are posted. This group then distributes the details to online real estate sites like Zillow, Realtor.com, Redfin, and others. Brokers and agents who subscribe to that listing service for a membership fee can access all the information. Real estate agents can also use the information to post their listings on social media and other online outlets. Removing yourself from a multiple listing service. Only licensed agents and brokers can access a listing service and make changes such as removal. Whether you're a buyer or seller, ask your listing agent to close out the listing on the listing service. This may not necessarily get everything removed right away, but it's a start. Just because your home's information is removed from the listing service doesn't mean it's not posted elsewhere. You may still find it on publicly accessible real estate sites. Once again, you can ask your listing agent to remove your photos and other home information from websites they have access to. If your agent is dragging their feet, you can take matters into your own hands and remove the information from each site. You will need to create accounts. You may have to claim ownership of the home before making any changes. This opens up tools to track the value of your home and gives helpful information on pricing, including the value of nearby homes, purchase history, and personalized recommendations. Claiming your home is also the first step in removing information and photos. Here's how to do it on a few popular sites, Zillow. Log into your profile at Zillow.com and search for your address to find your home's property page, then under more and so on, uh, drop down tab, verify your ownership, verify your ownership by answering a few questions. Once you've claimed ownership, you can start removing photos from uh, Zillow. Uh, so log into your profile again, click on to profile icon, then select your home, click on the title uh, or tile for your home to load the property page, click on edit facts icon from the owner view of the property page to remove a photo, click on an individual photo and click remove photo, remove all your photos, then select save changes. Having problems getting this done at Zillow, go to zillowzendesk.com, zillow.zendesk.com, and you can request there uh, to submit a ticket for help. That sounds a lot better. And then you go to realtor.com. So go to realtor.com slash my home, type in your address, click the magnifying glass to start claiming your home, follow the steps to prove your ownership and you're all set and then log back into your profile at realtor.com, go to your owner dashboard under my home tab, click the remove photos button or submit a ticket again at support.realtor.com forward slash S forward slash contact support if you need assistance. And right. similar thing on Redfin. Sure. Uh, I will go ahead and put this in the uh, comments so you can click on it yourself uh, as this is a public site. It goes, keep your techno, techno going. Uh, no, that's another advertisement for them. Uh, it says yeah, here, what's in your toilet? It. A ton of data. Just connect <laughs> this device. Oh, another another advertisement. My God, USA Today. Um, well, anyway, yeah. that is We're more good. or less uh, the guides to the top three, I would say, uh, listing services uh, for the public. Yeah, and, and if you're uh, finding it on other sites, you, you know, they, they may be able to find how to do it on those sites once you get there. You can make well, I was thinking that as I was reading it, right? There's Movado, very, very secondary. But yeah, there are some other sites. Uh, sure. Other well, you know, also deeper. there are other companies now, um, you know, other brokerages, national brokerages that are really pushing for, for front top, top rated on Google. It might have the same issue. Um, so again, the realtor who, who owns the listing online can manage whatever they want on photos, marketing material, anything mm -hmm. before they post the listing as sold. Okay. That official posting then eliminates their ability to alter the data. And we've been in this scenario. And even when somebody asks us to remove them after that point, right. they can go directly to the MLS and make the request. And we've done it, and I know our MLS system has removed them. Well, you know, another thing I was thinking about too, as I was reading that was, um, you know, we weren't a local agent there. Um, I don't even know if they were a local agent there, really. Um, yeah, they, they were out of Glendora. 
you know, you would hope there'd be more cooperation. There wasn't. If this was within our zone, maybe they would have been better about it because they've got a reputation there. Maybe they've got a, a relationship, but there was none. And they didn't care. Sure. Sure. Yeah, okay. and maybe even there could be a request to their MLS, even though they sent us that reason why they couldn't. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. I, you know, uh, I was going to find out. I'll make a call. But um, even the more powerful voice really might be the owner making that call. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay, well, great. I am going to move over to our second topic. Let me just pick it out here. Uh, and let's see here. Present, share. And, uh, you know, I could probably read the, the last paragraph, but how would you summarize this, Darren? What is it talking about? Oh, I think the first, the first paragraph uh -huh. was what really drew me into this. Oh, okay. Well, let me go ahead and do that. So, so relevant. Yeah. So this is from The Atlantic, a uh, very famous magazine and now online site. Title is Meet the Latest Housing Crisis Scapegoat. Blaming the housing crisis on hedge funds and private equity may be easy, but it's dead wrong. So that's what Jerusalem Demsis says. Let's see here. In reporting on the housing crisis, I often hear some version of a simple story purporting to explain why so many Americans struggle to afford a place to live. The story goes like this. Housing costs are unaffordable because, insert bad company here, is greedy and jacking up prices. The villain can be Airbnb or developers. It can be deep-pocketed foreigners or iBuyers. The story is compelling because it does not directly implicate regular people, sympathetic institutions, or elected officials. So right. what do you have to say about that as we kick this off? You know, you could end there and we could talk for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> You right. As probably... soon as I saw elected officials, I was like, oh, okay, I know where Darren's going on. Well, no, no, no. I'm not even going there, man. Right. I'm going to insert bad company uh, name here. Okay. Because it's always about blaming someone else. Uh-huh. Um, now, I'm not saying other people's actions do not create uh, difficult pathways for people. And I think they do. And I think there's a collective... Uh, ultimately, for those with the most wealth who have seen real estate as the best avenue of investment. Right. Um, and they're controlling more than anything, and this is what I never hear people talking about, the tax code related to real estate. Mm, you're right. I talk about this frequently. You buy a piece of real estate, particularly as an investment right. property. Right. And the first benefit you get is depreciation. And then you get people like George Bush comes in and says, well, you can now sell a house every two years and get $500,000 tax free from the federal government right. on an owner occupant. But people move a lot more now because of that. You get, you can have accelerated depreciation coming out of another, someone who wants aggressive tax code in the real estate environment. All these things have moved more investors into this arena. Um, and although institutional investors aren't the single source, it's a collective of super wealthy investors and those just seeking tax benefits as it relates to housing specific, specifically investment housing. Mm -hmm. And it's affecting the owner occupant housing, which is where this all goes to, right? right? People can't afford to buy a house anymore because the high percentage of houses that are owned by investors. Right. Or investors come in and consume the equity that maybe exists. I, we, we don't get as many of them today, but we used to get people that were eager to get into the housing market and would say, well, I'll buy a fixer. I'm comfortable with a fixer. Right. And in, in all sincerity, often that meant maybe some new flooring, some paint, <laughs> right. needed some yard work. And those almost don't exist because they are purchased by investors mm -hmm. and institutions. Right. Um, so it does have an impact. And I think 
it's hard to come in and put the kibosh to an existing system, but I do think government can have an impact by changing future behavior, right? right. I always hate, and this is my complaint that I've had about government, is they come in and they decide, well, we're going to punish you for doing what's right for decades and what mm -hmm. we accepted for decades. Right. That's inappropriate. But you can say that's no longer going to be a benefit to future people and that will change future behavior and habits. And more often, you know, open up at least the single family environment or make it less financially lucrative to own single family homes. Yeah. You do need investors to own multi-unit homes. Right. And you want them to be excited and make money to do it and provide good housing. Right. Uh, the biggest issue there is that uh, building codes have restricted housing and now they're panicking to help more housing come in. Right. Uh, so scape, the scapegoat thing always bothers me. Uh, and there are answers. Right. Um, but in this case, the institutional investors are not a single scapegoat. Neither are the general investors. Yeah. That's always a people. mix of things, right? Yeah. Always a combination. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're reminding me of uh, a friend of mine. Uh, he's a journalist and uh, he's very much about the cannabis movement and, and what's going on there. And, uh, you know, I read an L.A. Times story. I read some other story. I sent him off to him. But uh, basically, government is, is killing that industry because they don't understand the industry. Uh, they've taxed them too much. Uh, they can't write things off. Uh, and of course, there's also a bit of a gold rush mentality, right, from a lot of people that don't really understand the industry either. Uh, but it's all a combination of that industry is going down. There's going to be some pretty serious, uh, you know, business closings and, and people out of work because of this. Um, oh, so, yeah. it's certainly been happening for a while in yeah. that industry. Yeah, I think of I. I I'm late to the party, which I often am. Uh -huh. uh, I've been watching Yellowstone. Uh -huh. uh, I am on the fifth season. I must okay. say I'm enjoying it a lot. Yeah. But the big character on Yellowstone, uh, John Dutton, his simple policy to keep Montana the way it is, uh -huh. to keep out all of these Californians and New Yorkers, <laughs> as he <Right>. says, <laughs> is to double the tax for out-of-state people. Wow. I'm not saying that's the answer, right? but that logic, maybe to new purchases, mm -hmm. would disincentivize and change that behavioral pattern. Yeah. If you do it to people who already purchased, I have a problem with that for sure. Yeah. Um, but um, yes, there's help needed. Uh, putting all the burden on investors increasing fees you know, not making tenants pay rent. Some of these things are just mean. Yeah. They're mean to people who are trying to make a real living. Yeah. And, you know, well, they've also made them villains. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I don't know if the tipping point is there yet or we'll ever get to it. You know, is the free market just going to handle this the way they want to handle it? But uh, yeah, right. We're all becoming a, a nation of renters. Um, it's too bad. Right. You know, you read even this article, and I'm so tired of hearing these articles cite a mm -hmm. number uh -huh. that was established as a norm mm -hmm. 50 years ago. They always say, and this is crazy, people are paying over 30%. That number has not been realistic for 30, 40 years. Oh, right, right. right. Stop citing that number as a crisis for those trying to get into housing. For mm -hmm. those that get in and push the limits to 50% and they're savvy, they do it and they're very successful and their cost goes down. Housing is a hedge against inflation. Over time, the cost of your housing theoretically will go down if we have a slow, steady inflationary environment. Yeah. That's what happened to me. I know it's what's happened to you. I know enough about your history. It mostly is what happens to a lot of people with long-term housing success. Yeah. But you have to bite the bullet in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, 
couple fingers pointed at several parties, but uh, yeah. that's our take. <laughs>